A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty, hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's trouble ahead! I'm Silver! The West Texas town of Sago City was in the dry and merciless clutches of a prolonged drought. Not a drop of rain had fallen on the parched earth of that territory for months. Craig Bullock, whose law office was above the bank, considered these two facts as he descended the stairs and walked out onto the street. Bullock was a tall, gaunt man, slightly stooped, with features that resembled nothing so much as a death's head. His eyes were hard and unblinking behind steel-rimmed glasses. When he spoke, it was in a low monotone, as flat and dry as sun-baked dust. Apparently, he was a man without nerves. He was never surprised, never resentful, and never friendly. A circuit court judge in Missouri had noticed these things several years ago when he had said, You are a disgrace and a blight upon the legal profession. In my opinion, the only cure for a man so evil, so grasping, so murderous and depraved is the gallows. I deeply regret that the jury's verdict permits me to sentence you to federal prison for only 25 years. You deserve far more than that. The good people of Sago City knew nothing of Lawyer Bullock's past life. They knew him only as a dour and silent man who rarely spoke, as he did now to a group of ranchers who stood near the hitch rack. Good day, gentlemen. Pretty bad, isn't it? This drought, I mean. Pretty bad, all right. Yes. Yeah, worse than that. If we don't get some rain soon, it's going to kill what few of us are left. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it killed through over 300 head of my stock. And the rest of the critters are so weak they can hardly stand up. Well, what good would it do? There's nothing but parched weeds for them to graze on. Right. You're Tom Hubbard, aren't you? Own the rocking tea spread? That's right. Yeah, excellent piece of rangeland. Yeah, so is the broken arrow. Jim Never's place right next to me. Mm. Rangeland's no good without water. Uh, right. Let's see... How long has it been since we were fortunate enough to enjoy a little rain? 403 days. 403 days. It's odd that you should keep such an accurate count, Mr. Hubbard. Well, condemned prisoners keep a pretty good count of the days before they die. That's what this drought is to us, a death sentence. Hmm. Strange that you should say that. What do you mean? Nothing. I wish there was something I could do about it, gentlemen. Uh, what's the matter, Bullock? The whole town's in trouble. 
Thought you lawyers thrived on trouble. Not this particular kind. Yeah, I guess it doesn't fetch much business. It has been my experience, gentlemen, that there are more important things in the world than business, even legal business. I am sincerely sorry for all of you. If it were within my power to turn on the rain, you may rest assured I would do so. Good day, my friends. Hmm. You sure a lot of help. Yeah. Queer sort of cuss, ain't he? I don't know much about the practice of law, but that critter is one part of it I distrust. Look at him moseying down the street. Looks more like a pallbearer than anything else. <laughs> Who are them two hombres he's talking to now? They're strangers in town. One of them's named Sloan. Lud Sloan. He's a land buyer from the east. The other fellow's called Pete. Well, lawyer Bullock seems to know him pretty well. I got an idea Bullock knows a lot more than he ever tells. Look. Three of them sure in a huddle. You're the boss, Bullock. When do we do it? Tonight. Be in my office by sundown. You want me there, too? What do you think I'm paying you for? All right. How about the sheriff? I'll take care of that. I'm on my way to see him now. Your office at sundown. We'll be there. Be sure you are. This is one job I don't want any hitch on. Good afternoon, Sheriff Grimes. What do you see, Bullock? Looking for business? I might be. Well, we got a drunk back here in jail. He might want a lawyer when he sobers up. Does he have any money to retain counsel? Not a dime. Not interested. What's on your mind, Bullock? Want to see me? You're a good friend of Tal Hubbard's. I aim to be. Tal and I have been friends for years. And perhaps you can do a service for him. And also for me. What is it? I have a client. A man named Sloan. He's a land buyer. Recently arrived from the east. He wants to purchase Hubbard's ranch, the Rocking Tea. But your friend won't sell. I don't blame Tal. If I own the Rocking Tea... I won't sell it either. It's heavily mortgaged, and because of this drought, hasn't made a cent for over a year. So is every other spread. All the ranches are in the same fix. The weather ain't their fault. Uh, Mr. Cartwright at the Cattleman's Bank tells me that Hubbard's case is worst of all, and his is the most valuable ranch. What's the idea of telling me all this? Well, I thought perhaps you could persuade Hubbard to sell. Of course I won't. Why should I? Hubbard's desperate for money. I know it. They can't blame him for uh, not wanting to sell the rock and tea. It's his home. That's immaterial. Maybe you think so. But tall Hubbard homesteaded that land. He and his wife built the first house with their own hands. She died there. Tall's raising his daughter, the cutest little tag that ever Hubbard's lived. family doesn't interest me. My client wants to buy the ranch. If Tall wants to sell, it's his own business. Then you won't help to influence him? Not a bit. I'm sorry. A man's friend should help him. Hubbard's so desperate for money, he's liable to do something foolish. Good day, Sheriff. Oh, oh boy, oh. Daddy. Daddy. <coughs> Hello, Ginger. How's my girl? I've been cleaning the whole house. Washed the dishes and everything. Good. With a housekeeper like you, I guess I don't need to worry about hiring a cook, do I? Of course not. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, say, Ginger, that white coat tied to the rail over there, where did it come from? Oh, that's Victor, Dan's horse. Dan? Who's he? Just a boy who stopped by here while you were in town today. See, there he is on the porch. I've been waiting for you, sir. My name's Dan Reed. I'm glad to know you, son. I'm Tal Hubbard. And Ginger told me. What can I do for you? Well, two friends and myself have been riding the main trail north of here, heading east. Every creek or stream we found is bone dry and... Well, hunting water, huh? Enough for the horses. Well, water's a pretty scarce article in these parts, Dan. Yeah, it's the worst drought I've ever seen. Well, we all say the same thing. Cattle dying, crops burned up, and not even a sign of a rain cloud for over a year. Golly. Oh, but I've got a little spring at the bottom of that hill near the corral. It's enough water for us and for the horses... You and your friends are welcome to use as much as you want. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll tell them. We'll ride back later this evening. Anytime. Thanks again. Goodbye, Mr. Hubbard. Bye, Ginger. Bye. Oh, seems like a nice youngster. 
Got a fine-looking horse there. They're both nice. Come on, Victor. And now, sis, kind of a supper have you got fixed for your old pal. The best you ever ate. Ha, ha, ha. I'll have to eat it first, for I'll agree with you. Oh, Daddy, you always say that. understand perfectly what you're to do? Yeah, we've got it set. How oh, about Cartwright? He's downstairs in the bank now, alone. It'll be a cinch. Then we head for the Hubbard place, the Rock and Tea. That's right. You have the papers I gave you? Right here in my pocket. Come on, Pete. Remember, no slip-ups. Don't worry. <laughs> Ginger. That was the best meal I ever ate. You look worried, Daddy. Is something wrong? Mm, same thing, the drought. No water means no grass, and that means dead cattle. Cartwright at the bank won't loan me any more money to buy hay. And... Oh, I wish there was some way I could help. Oh, you are helping, honey. If it weren't for you, there wouldn't be any use in me trying to fight this thing. Ah, oh, don't worry, it'll work out. Uh, I might as well get the dishes washed. I'll go down to the spring and get some water. Sure, but watch your step. It's dark outside. Well, I know the way. <laughs> no matter how tough it gets, I'm the luckiest man in the world to have a daughter like her. Hmm. Wonder who that can be. Hubbard? That's right. Mr. Cartwright from the bank sent me out here. Cartwright? Well, I talked to him this afternoon. He didn't I say know. anything. After you left, he drew up this paper. Here, I want you to look it over. Why, this is a joint note made out to Jim Nevers and me. If we both sign it, Cartwright will make a loan of $50,000. Yeah. Why, this is great. With 50000 Jim and I can buy enough hay for all our stock and weather the drought. Yes, Cartwright figures that way, too. I wonder why he didn't mention a deal like this when I was talking to him today. Uh, bankers are cagey critters. Between you and Nevers, you've got the best land in the state. With that kind of security, he can't well, lose. Of course not, and it's only for a year. You want to sign it? Well, sure, but... Then we'll go over to Nevers' place and see what he oh, says. Oh, I know what Jim will say. He'll be just as pleased as I am. Oh, wait. There's a pen and ink right here in the drawer. Here, just tack your John Henry right under where it says Tal Hubbard. Ah. There. Hey, wait a minute. This paper I just signed is you the one... You guessed it, Hubbard, but you guessed too late. <laughs> Lud. Come on in, Lud. Hey, you must have hit him pretty hard. Nothing like the barrel of a gun alongside the head to quiet a critter down. How's your shoulder? Well, it feels a little better. We've got to plug him so he'll match it. Yeah, let's see. It's the right one, ain't it? This'll do it. How about the kid? You plant some of that money in the next room and I'll take Daddy, care of... Daddy, I... Oh! She got back quick. Who are you? Daddy, you... He ain't hurt much. Not yet. And you'd better keep quiet, sis, because you're going on a trip. There's the springs. See right over there. Oh, who's oh, 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 oh. Lucky you located water, Dan. Mr. Hubbard's very kind to let us use it. Easy, Silver. Not too fast, big fella. Yeah. Mr. Hubbard said it hasn't rained over here for over a year. I don't doubt it. Me see dry spell many times. Never seen one bad as this. Yes, it work. What's that? Let me go! Let me go! Hey, it must be Ginger. The little girl I was telling you about. Golly, that doesn't sound like a father. He's but... in trouble. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come, Come on, Victor. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Urging their horses forward with all possible speed, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan rode toward the Hubbard Ranch house and the frightened cries of Ginger. It's the girl, Ginger. Two men. See, one of them's holding on his horse. Wait, pull Silver. Who's going to make you hope I'll go? Hey, they're getting away and taking her with them. Aren't you going to do something? Uh huh? These men are heading north. Cut to the left and follow them. Uh. Don't try to overtake them. Find out where they go. Uh. Hey, do it. Get them up, scout. Why'd you just send Tonto? The girl's been kidnapped, Dan. I'm sure of it. Oh, golly, then now, why... Listen. Those horses are coming from Sago City, heading right for the ranch. Tonto will trail the men who have the little girl. You and I will move up to the east side of the house and see what happens there. Who do you think those men are? That's what we're going to find out as quietly as we can. Come on, Silver. All right, Victor. Slug in his right shoulder. Sheriff Grimes. I'm sure glad to see you. I wish I could see the same thing, Tom. An hombre walked in here, held me up, and then Look hit here, me. Sheriff, I found it under a pillow in the next room. What is it? Gold, hard cash. And the canvas sack says Cattleman's Bank. I guess our story about seeing Hubbard and Nevers wasn't so wrong after all. Sure, sorry to hear it. What are you talking about? What do you think, Tom? Well, all I know is that a fellow I never saw before walked in here tonight with a note from Cartwright at the bank. It was a joint note for $50,000 made out to me and, and Jim Nevers. Well, I signed it, and then I noticed it wasn't the same note that I'd been reading. But before I could move, something hit me over the head. Yeah? You've got a bullet wound in your shoulder. How'd that happen? Well, I don't know. Uh, kind of a thin story, Sheriff. Well, what is this all about, Grimes? Two men held up the Cattleman's Bank tonight. Killed Sam Cartwright and cleaned the place out. The boys saw those gents backing out of the bank. One of them had been hit in the shoulder. You think I was one of those men? You and Jim Nevers. This is some of the bank's cash. We found it in your house. Well, I've been here all evening. Ginger will tell you that... Where is Ginger? Where is she? I ain't seen her at all. Ginger! Well, they've taken her, too. My little girl, they... Ah, uh, the kid's probably hiding around here someplace just to back up Tall's story. Why, you... Well, take it easy, Tall. Your story's true, it'll be proved. True? Well, you must be loco, all of you, to think that I'd... All I know is that Cartwright sent a man out here with a note Everybody and... knows Cartwright wouldn't loan any of any money. Some of you boys had better ride over to Jim Nevers' place, see what he has to say. Can you walk to him? Well, sure, why? Guess you'd better come into town with me. Been hit over the head, framed, and Ginger's been kidnapped. And now you're going to arrest me. I hate to do it, Tom. Known you all my life, and you know me. I thought you were a friend of mine. I am. And I'm also the sheriff of this county with a sworn duty to perform. Come on, Tom. Let's ride into town. Yep. Who's that? Oh, I don't know. Ain't the boys. They headed for Jim Never's place. already here in camp waiting for us. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. What did you find out, Tonto? Crook take Hubbard girl to shack. Other side of mountain. Me trail them. One crook stay there. Other one leave. Take trail to Sago City. They must be holding Ginger for ransom. There's more to it than that, Dan. Mr. Hubbard hasn't any money. Then why Tonto? else would... Uh -huh. Whatever the plan is behind this, we must protect the girl first. You can handle that, can't you? Uh -huh. Me handle it quick. Good. Take Dan with you. Oh, gee, Help I... Tonto, Dan. He'll know what to do. And where you go, Kimasabi? I'll follow that posse into Sago City. Apparently, we're the only ones who know that Tall Hubbard is telling the truth. Come on, Silver. Golly, how are we going to save Ginger, Tonto? I no, may not know. First, we ride and ride past. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. got one cell in this jail. You and Tall have to share it. Jim. Anything you say, Sheriff. 
Hello, Tom. Have you gone loco, Grimes? Can't you see this is a frame-up? Jim and I didn't hold up any bank. Hombre came over to my place about two hours ago. He said you would send him, Tom, and showed me the note you'd signed. Naturally, I signed it, too. Sure. Sheriff and a posse rode up and arrested me. I can't figure it out. Well, I can. Somebody's framed us. And they've kidnapped my little girl. Well, I'll send some grub back here so you fellas can eat. This whole thing is too much for me. Don't make sense. I thought Grimes was a friend of mine. Yours, too. I guess a lawman's got to think of his duty first. He said he'd help us every way he could. How? By keeping us locked in his jail while kidnappers get away with my daughter? Better not draw, Sheriff. I have you covered. Who are you? What do you want? You have Tall Hubbard and Jim Nevers in jail. What's that to you? Oh, I see. Then Tall and Jim are tied in with an outlaw, and you're No, I'm not an outlaw. Neither are they. Hubbard's little girl was kidnapped tonight, and he was tricked into signing a note. That's as he told you. Yes? How come you know so much about it? I was there. You were there? We're wasting time, Sheriff. Friends of mine are trailing the men who took Hubbard's daughter. I'm here because whoever planned this thing will follow it up before the night's over. Oh, wait a minute. I'm the sheriff of this county, and there's no reason why I should palaver with a masked hombre like you. The reason's right here in my hand, Sheriff. And it's loaded. Hey. What do you want? Have you any idea who would frame a thing like this? No, I haven't. And all we can do is wait. That uh, door over there. Where does it lead? Storeroom. Keep saddle gear in there. And that's where I'll wait. The door will be open enough for me to use this gun. If I have to. I don't know what you're figuring on, stranger. Neither do I. We'll both wait and see. This crook shack here. What are we going to do? You knock on the door. A man will come out. Let me get him. All right. What do you want? Well, I, I was riding south to Sago City, and well, I, I guess I lost my way. Thought maybe you could that help me. That ain't my fault, kid. We don't want any strangers around here. Get moving. Oh, won't you at least point out which direction is south? I said get moving. Say, go sit here. Oh, 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 did you get him, Tom? Uh, you'll not know what hit him. Who is it? Who's there? That's Ginger. I'll go in and see if she's all right. Uh, me tie up, crook. Ginger, are you all right? Dan. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, they've got you tied to a chair. Here, fix that. Oh, I could hardly believe it when I heard your voice. Who is... That's Tano, Indian friend of mine. Here, you sure you're all right? They didn't hurt me. The only thing is, Daddy. Daddy was lying on the floor... Those men Your father's have... better now, Ginger. I'm sure you'll be all right. I want to see him. I want to go home. Well, he isn't there now, Ginger. He went into town with the sheriff. But Tano and I'll take it to him. Can we get there fast? Oh, wait till you ride Victor and you'll know what the word fast means. Are we ready to go, Tano? Uh-huh. We carry crook and scout. Girl, will ride with you. Come on, Ginger. <laughs> Sheriff. Well, Lawyer Bullock. I don't believe you're acquainted with Mr. Sloan, one of my clients. Glad to know you, Sheriff. Well, sit down, Jess. What can I do for you? Thank you. Quite a bit of excitement this evening. Bank robbery and murder. Yep. I understand you've captured the two ranchers responsible for the crime. You mean Tall Hubbard and Jim Nevers? Got them locked up in the cell now. I'm glad to hear it. Lawlessness should be punished promptly. What's the matter with your shoulder, Mr. Sloan? Oh, He sprained I... it. Fell off his horse. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I was just going to remark, Sheriff, there's a lot of truth in that old saying. It's an ill wind that blows no one good. What do you mean by that? This regrettable affair at the bank and the unfortunate death of Mr. Cartwright. As you know, my client, Mr. Sloan, has been trying to buy property in this area. Well... Failing in that, he decided to buy stock in the Cattleman's Bank. In fact, he purchased controlling stock. What's that got to do with me? Uh, just this. 
As the bank's new president, Mr. Sloan finds himself in the odd position of holding mortgages on property owned by the very men who robbed the bank. Herbert and Nevers? Exactly. But Mr. Sloan is a very fair man and an understanding one. What do you mean? He realizes that this terrible drought probably made these men desperate. They are more to be pitied than censured. Therefore, my client wants you to tell everyone in town that they won't lose a cent through the robbery. Mr. Sloan will personally make up every dollar that has been stolen. That's mighty generous of Mr. Sloan. However, in view of the circumstances, he will be forced to foreclose on the Hubbard and Nevers mortgages. I thought Toll told me those loans had a few more months to run. As a matter of fact, they were both due and payable yesterday. Here, you can see for yourself. The dates are right there. With the signatures of Hubbard and Nevers. That's all I wanted to know. An outlaw! Mask! Better not uh, go for a gun. Oh. That little scratch on your arm won't hurt you. Sheriff, I guess you heard enough to figure out who was behind the frame up. I yeah, sure did. Keep them coyotes covered while I let Tall and Jim out of jail. It was a pretty good idea, Bullock. But it wasn't good enough. Bullock, it doesn't surprise me that he was. But I've never seen this other man. Neither have I. Now, Mr. Bullock probably had two partners. And unless I'm mistaken, the second partner is with my friends who just rode up. Daddy. Ginger! Uh, here, this crook. We catch him. That's him. That's the one. I thought so. Sheriff, I guess you know what to do with two murderers and a crooked lawyer. I yeah, sure do. And our job's finished. Come on, Dan. Hello. Hey, but who was he? I don't know. It's more than I can figure out. He walked in here, seemed to know exactly what was going to happen. Funny part of it is, it did happen. I know who he is. Who? How do you know, Ginger? Dan Reed told me. That man is the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.